There could be some changes coming to the Texans offense, specifically when it comes to how they're blocking. The blocking performance against the Green Bay Packers, unacceptable. C.J. Stroud pressured on almost 50% of his dropbacks, pressured on most of his third down dropbacks. The Texans can't win with the offensive line, the running backs, and the tight ends blocking like this. They've got to block better and give C.J. Stroud an opportunity to succeed from the pocket, get the ball to the wide receivers, and get this passing attack rolling like we know it's possible it can roll. They've had moments where they have had success throwing the football. They've got to capture those moments and keep Stroud comfortable back there. Enough of the free rushers. Enough of the easy, basic, elementary defensive things destroying this Texans offensive line. I'm tired of it. I know C.J. Stroud's tired of it. We saw him throw the helmet yesterday. And you know what? D'Amico Ryans is tired of it, too. We have a lot of things to clean up when it comes to you know our protection, and it's everyone involved, right? O-line, tight ends, backs. It's everybody working together, being on the same page, and just getting it done. Like We've had uh, multiple weeks where the same things have, have hurt us multiple times, so we have to get it fixed, starting with the coaches and out to the, down to the players of finishing and executing it. Not acceptable for the Texans. A variety of different players could be to blame. Maybe it's the five offensive linemen. Maybe it's the tight ends that get asked to stay in and block. Even some running backs from time to time. Heck, you could even say maybe there's something with C.J. Stroud that he's not seeing or picking up or sliding the def or the protection here or there, though D'Amico Ryans didn't name Stroud as one of the culprits for the poor pass blocking in the Packers game. But it's not good enough. So, hey, if it's not good enough, and it's been these guys for a while where it hasn't been good enough. Would you make some adjustments? Would you pull out your best David Bowie or Tupac impression and create some ch 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 changes? Yeah, for me, everything is on the table. When it comes to it, it has to get fixed. Okay, so nothing is off the table for the Houston Texans when it comes to trying to fix this offensive line. But what could they do? Well, if it's about swapping guys in and out, there are certainly some options that the Texans can go about and change the composition of this offensive line. Remember, this is the offensive line that the Texans have wanted for the better part of 18, 19 months since they went into the 2023 NFL Draft, this is the offensive line they have wanted. Laramie Tunsil, Kenyon Green, Juice Scruggs, um, Shaq Mason, and Titus Howard. That's the offensive line that they have wanted to put on the field. Injuries prevented them from putting that line on the field last year, but they've had those guys available and playing together since training camp and here into the regular season. And it hasn't looked good. In fact, the mismatched patchwork offensive line that the Texans dealt with throughout the 2023 season, it looked better at times than what this version of the line has looked like. So it can't stay the same unless there are some incredible turnarounds by the five guys that they have out there, Tunsil and Green and Scruggs and Mason and Howard. It's got to get adjusted, changed, or at the very least, the Texans got to let those guys know their jobs are in danger. Now, I'll start with the preface. They're not benching Laramie Tunsil. They pay him too much money. He is actually pretty good at pass blocking when he – takes care of his business in one-on-one -on -one matchups, and he's not trying to help Kenyon Green. And they run to the left quite a bit and have a good amount of success uh, with Tunsil out there. Yes, you would want just a little bit more, but maybe when Tunsil doesn't have to worry about the other four guys, he'll take care of his business. So Tunsil and an adjustment to the left tackle spot, that's not on the table for this Texans team. But there's a lot of things that should be on the table. Hey, a quick moment here for my friends at Platinum AC and Heating. When you're hot under the collar thinking about the Texans offensive line, you need to stay cool and you need the best in the air conditioning game to do that. From repairs to replacements to just year-round preventative maintenance, Platinum AC and Heating has the best prices in town, the best service in town. Five-star rated by the Better Business Bureau, five-star rated on Google and Yelp. 
I love what my guy Dwayne has brought to the air conditioning business. Platinum AC and heating is the best. Dwayne's a Texans fan just like you. Give him a call today and get your special price on the year-round preventative maintenance. 832-777-3683 is the number. You can also check it out in the description down below. Get your special year-round preventative maintenance price at Platinum AC and Heating. Just tell them you saw it right here on the video. Let's start with the one that I feel like is the easiest move to make for this Texans team, and that is a move at left guard. How about green for green? How about K green for K green? How about Kendrick green in for Kenyon green? And I know Kenyon green was a first round pick and there was significant investment in him from a couple of years ago in the draft, but it hasn't looked good good for Kenyon Green. He is a sieve when it comes to pass blocking. And I know he's got a little success in the run blocking here and there, but he constantly fails to get a hand on guys. Guys are rushing through his lane, it feels like, on a regular basis. Kenyon Green is not getting it done. The guy was excellent in week one against the Indianapolis Colts, and it has been a steady decline, uh, culminating in a really poor performance against the Green Bay Packers. Kenyon Green out Kendrick Green in. Now, Kendrick Green actually played pretty well at left guard last year before a knee injury ended his season. Kendrick Green, of course, uh, was a former Steeler. The Texans traded for him last year before the season got going, and he was in there and started a handful of games and played left guard and it did pretty well before the knee injury ended his season. And there was no competition between Kendrick Green and Kenyon Green in training camp, but that's who the backup is. That's who came in when Kenyon Green got dinged uh, a game or two ago. I think it was against New England. Kendrick Green came in. So that'd be the first swap, and that's an easy swap to me. Kendrick Green plays that position when it's the backup offensive line together. Uh, I got to imagine he knows what needs to be done there. But Kenyon Green being shown to the bench feels to me like the easiest and most likely move that the Texans could make to swap some things out here on this offensive line. The next potential move that they could make, and this one's not super easy to make, but you've got at least some evidence from last year that the backup in this spot could hold it down, and that's inserting Jarrett Patterson in for Juice Scruggs. Now, I'm not totally in favor of this because we saw what Jarrett Patterson looked like when he filled in for Scruggs this season, and it wasn't uh, all that good, and it was actually kind of worse than what we've seen from Juice Scruggs, but Patterson was solid last year as a rookie at the center spot, and center is an important part of this offensive line. You've got to have the communication skills to help out C.J. Stroud with figuring out where the protection is going to be, and you need to have a relationship with the quarterback. Well, Patterson played more center last year than Juice Scruggs did for this team, so he's got the relationship with C.J. Stroud, and he's uh, got a little bit of experience playing center for this team last year. Now, obviously, that would send Scruggs to the bench, or if you wanted to bump Juice Scruggs over to left guard and bench Kenyon Green and then put Patterson in at center, Scruggs in at left guard, that's not a bad option as well. I don't quite see this going that way. This is the center that they have wanted since they drafted Juice Scruggs, and they traded up for him, got him in the second round. They've wanted him to be the center. Injuries prevented him from playing center last year, but it was his gig as he showed up this season for the Texans, and I don't know that they want to make that change just yet. I don't know that Scruggs has been bad enough that I'm clamoring for Patterson uh, after we've seen what Patterson put together in one game. Now, hey, play a couple games, get some consistency under his belt. Maybe Patterson can be a little bit better than what Scruggs has been. If we hadn't seen Patterson to this point, it might be easier, but it wasn't great when Patterson got the opportunity earlier this season. So I would say less likely to make a move there. The next option for this team is sit down Shaq Mason, the veteran guard that the Texans traded for from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, was pretty decent last year. In fact, when you look at some of the stats, he was around the 20th, 25th best guard in football. When you think about 
hey, there's 62 guards, excuse me, 64 guards. Math is hard. 64 guards in football, uh, and then a few more after that play. That's a pretty good spot to be in. Mason's not that guy from just last year right now. He doesn't look as powerful as he's looked in the past. He doesn't look as aware of what he needs to do in the past. Some of the issues we see with Kenyon Green, we see with Shaq Mason, free rushers from his side, not getting a hand on anybody, just you know, blocking somebody that's already well blocked and a guy uh, running through where he probably should be. It just hasn't looked good for Shaq Mason. Now, it's not easy to bench a veteran like Shaq Mason, and I don't know that there is a clear-cut, makes-a-ton-of-sense option for this team. Nick Broker has played a little right guard for this team on the second offensive line. Kendrick Green could be an option there, uh, but I wouldn't put Jared Patterson there. I wouldn't put Juice Scruggs there. So this one's a little bit more difficult, but it might just be as simple as having a really difficult conversation with Shaq Mason, letting him know this has got to improve or this is going to be a really, really tough conversation in the next couple of weeks, uh, and somebody will have the opportunities that we have been giving to you. But again, it's hard to bench a veteran. It's hard to bench a guy who's got a resume like Shaq Mason, but it has got to look better than what Shaq Mason has been putting out there at the right guard spot. And finally, how about a Titus Howard adjustment? Now, this one isn't quite what you think. It isn't just, hey, Titus Howard, take a seat. Here comes Blake Fisher to play Titus Howard's spot. I know some people would be in favor of that, but the investment in Titus Howard, you would want him on the offensive line unless he was hurt bad enough that he couldn't go out there. So if he was healthy, it's very hard to bench a veteran who's been around and is highly compensated. It's a similar conversation to that of Shaq Mason. But how about this idea? Because I'm ready. I'm ready to just, let's see here. I'm ready to just throw things at the wall to see if they stick. Did that stick? No. I'm ready to throw things at the wall to see if it sticks if I'm the Texans on the offensive line. So what about, and he's got experience doing this, what about if Blake Fisher starts at right tackle and the Texans move Titus Howard to left guard where he played last year? Now I know what you're saying, Cody, he didn't look good at left guard last year. Yeah, but he looked better than what Kenyon Green is putting together. And it, I know we are going to see Blake Fisher at the tackle spot uh, in the next couple of years, it'd be nice to kind of get him going and get a little trial by fire and see what Fisher can put together. Plus, I like Fisher's potential to move some earth in the rushing attack. Maybe the Texans could start running right. They seem to only like to really run left in their current iteration, and maybe running left would get even better when you got those two monsters right next to each other in Laramie Tunsil and Titus Howard. And I know Titus Howard has made it very clear. He feels like he is a tackle. He should be playing tackle. But if it's not working for the team, and this could potentially make the team better, like what was happening last year when they played George Fant at right tackle, despite Titus Howard being healthy and ready to return, they put Howard in there at left guard, and it was mixed results is probably putting it nice. It didn't look good, but I'm willing to try anything if I'm the Texans at this point to try to fix it, and it's really difficult to have a highly compensated guy like Titus Howard or Shaq Mason and sit them down. Ultimately, if that's what you have to do to fix this offensive line, you do it. You don't worry about one guy's feelings. You worry about the other 52 guys being able to perform and being able to actually throw the football if they can get the pass blocking squared away. It's not just those five guys, Dalton Schultz and Cade Stover and even Team Quateriano to an extent. They've got to do better blocking at the tight end spot. Daria Gumbawale has got to be excellent when he is in there. Same with Damian Pierce and the rare Joe Mixon pass blocking appearance, which isn't that often. They've got to get better at pass blocking. And if they don't get better at pass blocking, I don't know how they're going to ever get this passing attack going on a consistent basis and figure out exactly what the top end potential is of this offense. What say you? You in favor of any of these changes? You want to make some of these swaps in the offensive line lineup? Or should we say the offensive lineup? 
I will go offensive line lineup. Let me know in the comment section down below. On your way down there, throw me a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to visit with our friends at Platinum AC and Heating. The year-round preventative maintenance special price is available for you for watching this video. Just call my guy Dwayne at Platinum AC and Heating. 832-777-3683. Tell them you saw him right here on the YouTube channel, and you'll get that special price on year-round preventative maintenance. And when it's nice and cool outside, it's a great time to get that AC checked out. You get on the schedule, and it's always running its best and most efficient, and it's saving you money. So let me check this out. You save money when you get the special price, and then you save money because your AC is always running efficiently. I mean, What's not to like about that? Give Platinum AC and Heating a call today. Don't forget, prize picks. We didn't win our entry last week. We'll put a couple together throughout the course of this week. It's Daily Fantasy, the best and easiest way to play Daily Fantasy. Play your first five, get $50 on prize picks and use my code STOOTS, S-T-O-O-T-S. That's STOOTS, S-T-O-O-T-S. The link in the description down below uh, will get you signed up as well. Appreciate you watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I can't wait until we talk Texans again soon.